my other in-law's house, and um, she had this, I think it's like a little one and a half pound um, sunbeam bread maker. Real simple, pretty basic, and um, I wanted to make some bread. So we've got um, the King Arthur whole wheat, 100% whole wheat flour, um, and then a little bit of all-purpose flour for the recipe. But in a bread machine, you want to um, add the ingredients in the order listed um, so that all of your liquids are on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and do this. One cup of very warm water. This is actually out of the tap, but it's just what I could grab. So it's just very warm water out of the tap. So we're going to do one cup of that. Then it's a quarter cup of oil. I like any kind of olive oil. I happen to have the extra virgin olive oil right here. So a quarter cup of oil. And then a quarter cup of um, honey. But we don't have honey, so let me think. Didn't think about that. We are just going to use a little bit of maple syrup. Mostly to get the yeast. It's not like a sweet bread, but it's going to help just make our yeast nice and active. So I'm just going to do an eighth of a cup. I don't know. Since we're fudging, might as well fudge a little bit more. So, um, but I'll have the recipe in the comment, in the description below. And then we'll figure that out. So then, that's our wet ingredients. The water, the oil, and the honey. Or in this case, I did maple syrup. And then we're going to do our dry ingredients on top. So we're doing a cup and a half of, of the whole wheat flour. Um, you could do this all whole wheat. Uh, it'll be a little bit heavier bread, which is fine. But because this is only my second time using this bread machine, I just want it to be a nice, um, soft kind of look. So I'm going to do a cup. In my estimation, there's no, like, you know, flour, bread, you kind of have to feel it anyway, and based on the weather. So I'm kind of just making it, um, you know, uh, spread around on there. And then my half cup, so I'm doing one and a half cups of the whole wheat flour. I'm trying to just get all mixed up. And then it's a cup of all-purpose flour. She has this little um, scoop in here, and since we're getting down to the, the bottom, I'm going to use it. Boy, we are to the bottom, bottom of this bin. Should be, should be just enough, though. Not quite enough. So I'm going to top it off with my whole wheat. So this one will be more whole wheat. You're going to hear the family in the background coming in and out and outside. Now guys looking at me like, are you videoing, Mom? <laughs> Alright, so my uh, flour is in there. It's a little bit more whole wheat than half. And then, um, I'll put the flour on Salt. I need a teaspoon of salt. So we're putting all of our, again, we're putting all of our dry ingredients on top. I think the salt cup put away. Where's me some salt? Well. We'll just use it out here. Okay. Teaspoon of salt. And then the yeast. So this, this active dry yeast is um, two teaspoons. Exactly. I measured it this morning. So we're going to go ahead and just put this whole pack in. I'm making sure the yeast is out of the top of this. So I can just cut it off. And then we'll dump it in here. So that's just one of those yeast packets. It's two teaspoons. Which is what the recipe calls for. So now we've got all of our liquid ingredients. Our dry ingredients, salt, those are only important things, and yeast. So now we're going to put it over here to mix in the machine. Okay, just for reference, this is the bread machine. Like I said, pretty basic, but it worked really nice to mix that dough and plugging it in. Okay. And then what you want to do is just bring your bring it over here and plop it in there. Okay. And then um, I just leave that out of the way, close this. I'm going to choose, plugging it in turns it on, so I'm just going to choose the number 7 option, which is for dough. Oops, I passed it. Six, seven. Um, the crust color doesn't matter, um, it's just going to do the number 7, it's going to start to mix it. There's not any kind of safety feature on this, so you can mix it. We'll come back in a little bit and I'll show you what the dough looks like. So this machine kind of turns on and off as it's mixing, I think it's its way. But I always kind of, once it's in a dough ball, I always kind of just get the dry stuff off of the sides of it. It's safe, I'm just sticking a rubber spatula in there, not right around the middle, just around the edge, getting all the dry bits off. And then, um, then I just let it do its thing, but see how it stops? And then it turns on. It's just part of its way of making sure everything gets mixed and it relaxes down. So that's nothing to be concerned about. Okay, we're just going to take another look at this. I'm just showing you it's still working on and off. It'll turn on and off a little bit. It's mixing up really well. It's a really nice looking dough. See, it's not sticky, but it's really nice and soft. So we're just going to let it go through its cycle and I'll show you about a few different times. Okay, it's now just in the raising stage. So basically, um, this is showing 54 minutes left on the cycle. Um, but whenever this has risen partway up here like this, it's warm. It's nice and warm in there. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and take it out and shape it like I want to shape for this um, batch of bread. So we'll resume then. Okay, so I think this is raised enough for what I want it for because I'm going to go ahead and shape it and then let it raise again for about 20, 30 minutes. So let me pull this out of here. There's like 30 minutes left on this cycle. Um, it would get nice and like this, but because I'm just using this as a dough recipe, um, I just, I don't need it to do that. So we can hit stop on here. Get this out of here. I'm trouble pulling it out earlier. Okay. Now we 
I just pulled the camera out for it. There we go. So then we're gonna go over here to this counter. And I think, just kind of for fun, I'm gonna make some, uh, okay, so this was my loaf from earlier. This is the exact same recipe, but I did it in a loaf pan. So that turned out really nice. But for this one, I think just for fun, I um I want to make like uh, hot dog type buns or hoagie buns. We'll just make maybe like four of them in here and just see how they turn out. I was trying to find, see I'm just pulling this out of here. Came out pretty nice. Um, the hook is in here. Sometimes that comes out, sometimes it doesn't. So I want to spray my hands just a little bit. Okay, and at this point, we're experimenting a little bit. Because I, um, see, that might make, hmm. Okay, so I, I don't have a cutting board under here. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna um, saw. I'm just gonna do that. Let's see, that's gonna be too big. I might decide to get a different pan. Like I said, we're experimenting, so I'm, I think I want to do that size. Half and half and half and half. Generally, they'll be about the same size. But now, this pan isn't right. So, I'm going to go right over here. I think I know just the one I want. This one. It's a little bit smaller than a 9 by 13 But I think it's going to fit fit nicely kind of the idea I have. So now I'm going to make um, maybe like hot dog bun type things. I'm going to get it. I'm, I'm like kind of creating a, <laughs> I don't know what I want it, kind of creating like this. This is how you would make dinner rolls. Okay, and then you could just plop it right in there and I would do like eight of them in here. But I want to try hot dog buns. So now I'm going to, I'm just going to roll these out a little bit <laughs> to about the length of this. I know they're going to raise up. So see I'm <laughs> I'm not used to doing it one-handed. Kind of like this. You're making a nice surface area tension on top, and that would be your dinner roll. But I'm going to go ahead and do like this, and we're going to stick it right in here. So I can do two at a time. There's two dinner rolls, or my hot dog bun. That one feels a little bit bigger. There's a hole in it. But it'll be fine. One, two, three, four. More. <laughs> uh, okay. That one's deformed. Oh well. You know what? Take this all. Maybe we'll just turn these into. Okay, that one and this one. almost like a loaf but we'll see there's got to be a better way but we'll see how these turn out uh, i'm going to stick them in the oven they're nice and raised and uh, we'll see what they look like when they come out this is my loaf from the, the first batch um i always prefer to put mine in the bag <clears throat> it's cool but i always prefer to put mine in the bag for a little bit you know before i slice it just because it kind of softens the top and the knife just runs better it's just a preference it's not that big okay i'm going to take these out i think we're just going to call them done <clears throat> So I'll let them sit here just a little bit, like this, and then I'll turn them, well, I'll just turn them out now onto this. Let me get it here where you can see it good. Okay. In fact, let's just do it like this. I think that'll come out pretty easy. <laughs> try not to burn. Burn. Anybody? Okay, there we go. There's our, these just, these might turn out okay. Wow, turn them over. There. Now they'll cool like this and we'll separate them after a while. All right, here's our half of the hot dogs that I did. So they're a little bit big. I'm not sure how you'd cut them. Maybe open them up this way. Um, who knows? They're just a really funny shape. Uh, I'm actually going to cut them just to make some like garlic bread out of them for tonight. Um, so here we go. That's it. It was really fun, really nice. 